anybody who wants to be an artist that thinks it's just about being in your garret painting, forget it. My life is considerably different now, radically different. Sometimes like, I've got some paintings that I've done when I've been young, younger, like quite sexual, and I find it a bit embarrassing. And my life drawings are pretty accurate, they're pretty good, which would shock a lot of people, I think. This, this room is wrong. This is wrong. I, I really don't like this yeah. at all. I either need another one here, or I just need three, or I take one out. I want to take Eagle Schuler out of Vienna from 1900 to 1918, and I want to take Tracy Emin out of London from 1990 to 2000. Not that I don't really belong in that decade, but I need to move on. My work needs to breathe, and I need to feel a lot more freer. So, this is my painting outfit. Sadly, it's not as glamorous as it used to be when I was younger, but um, it does the job. And I'm not like other painters. I tend to use this really awful plastic palettes and then just build the paint up and build it up, or else I use these plates. I never use a real palette. Or, um, I don't take it that seriously, really. And now, very excitingly, I've got this new colour called Mars Black. And I used to paint in oil paint all the time, and then I had a kind of, like, total breakdown, serious, serious breakdown when I was younger. And after that, I couldn't use oil paint anymore because the smell reminded me too much of the things that distressed me. So then when I started painting again, I used acrylic. And acrylic... If you've always painted in oil, acrylic is actually really, really difficult to paint with. Because with acrylic, once it goes on, that's it. You can't take it off. But now there's a new, new acrylic paint, which it stays wet, which sometimes I buy by accident, and it does my head in. I would really like to start working on a series of new, new drawings, a couple of drawings that are kind of slightly different, and I'm going to do it with gouache. And what I do is I collect these little Edwardian erotic photographs that are original. And I use them as my inspiration just for the body shape or the form. But it, it, that's not the people that I'm painting. The people that I'm painting actually live in my head somewhere. What I want to do is I want to, today, <laughs> I want to start working on that big painting. And to work on the big painting, I can't just, like, go up to it and start working on it because I'm too intimidated by this. It's like the cliché, you know, the big white canvas and everything. I don't want the big white canvas. I have to have something really strong in my head and then I have to be really confident. I have to go up and I have to just paint it on it. It's quite stiff, that one. That's why I want the other image to work from, so, it's, so I'm more free with it. What's really good is if I go and do some life drawing classes and it toughens up my drawing and makes me pay much more attention to what I'm looking at, because you can never draw from something two-dimensional and... and it's, it's not, it's just a reference. And my life drawings are pretty accurate, they're pretty good. 
they're not they're not like my not like they are my style and my line and my flow, but they're actually anatomically correct, which would shock a lot of people I think because a lot of people would just presume that I can't draw. But I spent seven years learning to draw, going to life classes. And if anybody's really learned to draw from scratch and they didn't know what they were looking at and they didn't and they learn, they learn the rules and they learn for everything from foreshortening, you know, chara scripts, shadow, everything, and then you suddenly learn to do it, you find the language, it's incredible. It's only then you can break it down. I found you. <laughs> I always say this, being an artist, um, being a successful artist isn't just about doing this. Like my studio's on four floors. This is just one floor. You know, half my studio is, is um, um, you know, computers and offices and other people working for me. And anybody who wants to be an artist that thinks it's just about being in your garret painting, forget it. it, it, it it's never going to work for you. You have to also have your head screwed on and be together, because otherwise no one's going to know you're there. That's another thing. Yeah. Next week, Ema and I will go to Hong Kong, because I have um, a double show in Hong Kong in 2016 during uh, Hong Kong Art Basel. So we're going to Hong Kong to sort all this out in advance. And also, then after that, we fly to Korea, because I'm having a show with Koji Gallery in, in Seoul, and it's one of the most... Um, formidable, serious galleries in the world uh, that's been going for a very, very long time. And Korea is extremely serious when it comes to contemporary art and modern art. So it's really amazing to be showing with them and they're going to rep they'll be representing me, so I'll be working with a new gallery. So that's a really important visit after Hong Kong. And then Ema comes back and then I stay in Sydney and I do some talks and some lectures and I go and visit um, Melbourne Museum in Melbourne that's interested in showing me. So it's pretty full on. That takes us to the middle of March. Sometimes I, I get up in the morning and I just think, oh, yeah, I just want to, just really want to just paint today. And I come in a little bit early and I'm kind of, like, really happy. And I've totally forgotten that I've got a meeting with the accountants, which is really important. And it's really dry and really horrible and I really have to pay attention and it's the last thing I want to do. And it, it almost, it's almost like it's killing me physically killing me because I want to be doing this and and I and I think also that's you know the reason why I, I could never have children because I think you know obviously being a mum be pretty amazing but I don't think I'd be able to I'm I think I'd be maybe not a very good mum or too good a mum and not do and then then and this all dies and then I die and then I'd be resentful and a horrible person and I realise as I get older that this is it. This is, this is what I have. This is me. So there's no halfway house. This series of work is like, you know, with the self-portraits. I mean, that's something which relates to me. I've been drawing myself all, all my life. And they're really explicit about his own, I mean, his own body, how he's looking at his body. But what he did is, what he did is he contorted himself. He tried to get some extremity in everything that he was doing. But for me, what's more interesting, though, is the female figures, always. Because I've never seen anything um, so sexual in a work of art before. I mean, I would never do anything so sexually explicit as that, ever. I, don't, I, I never could, and I probably never would. But um, I can still relate to that totally. And when I was young, Egan Schiele was my favourite artist, I mean, without a doubt. And I got into him because I liked David Bowie. And David Bowie emulated Egan Schiele poses for two of his album covers, for Low and um, Heroes, of course. And I was so impressed by these album covers, and my friend... 
told me, you know where that's from? It's from Egan Sheila. And I rushed up to the local art shop and got a book out. Look, pulled the book out, the only one on German Expressionism. And there, there was like Oscar Kokoschka, Egan Sheila, and suddenly it was like I'd come home. Everything made sense to me. But look at this one. This is so brilliant. She looks so strong, and she just looks so tough. You know, and that's, that to me is a good thing in art. It's, and that's also part of what I want to project within myself. Some of these, the women look quite vulnerable or frail or whatever it is. He's got all these different qualities in these women. And that's what I want in my work, that to come through. Because, um, you know, it's not, it's not just one kind of woman out there. trying to pluck up the courage to start the big painting. The most interesting thing is, I know whatever I paint on there, I'm going to paint over. There's two things I can do. I can put a big wash on it, like a coloured wash, which I'm also tempted to do right now first, in pink. I think I might do that. I think I might paint some pink mountains on it before I put the figures on. Because it'll be pretty, it'll be nice. The other thing about painting is if you're not feeling very strong or very tough or you're not feeling very robust, you can't do it. I like it sometimes if I've been drinking and I pick them up and I kind of swing them around the room or whatever. And I've usually got music on playing very loud. It's dangerous, very dangerous. Now, this painting, I started in 2001, and I painted over a few times. And um, so, it's kind of, sort of exciting. 2001, that's uh, 14 years ago. What was I doing in 2001? You know, emotionally, I was in a completely different place, totally different. And I looked like I was about 25, you know, and I behaved like I was as well. It, my life is considerably different now, radically different. You know, I still go, I still go crazy now about, on things, but um, it's a different sort of craziness. I think now I go a bit stir crazy because I feel a bit trapped somehow within my own making, of course. I'm not complaining that much about it. I'm just saying that. I know my life is radically different from how it was then. I was young then. I'm not young now. You know, it's this whole thing about the YBAs or whatever. You know, I pointed out to someone the other day, we were not actually young. You know, when I was nominated for the Turner Prize for my bed, I was actually 36. You know, and by, you know, it's old enough to be a grandmother. Originally, this was a figure with wings flying. A bit over the top, bit over romantic even for me. 
But I, I liked the idea that the wings were there, and I liked the idea that the, that this will end up being like, look, this will be, end up like mountains. Look, there's snow now. 